Guys, we've got absolutely massive news that the one and only Visa is going to start settling transactions on top of the Ethereum blockchain. So we've been speculating about that. Some on this channel, you've heard whispers of this for a while, but now we have massive confirmation this is actually happening. I talked about this in my live stream earlier this week that we do, you know, Monday through Friday. So make sure you check that out if you haven't already. But I want to make this dedicated video to explain this, exactly what's going to happen, why this is such a big deal, and how companies can use blockchain technology and DeFi to improve the current financial system that we have today. So before we get into that, you know, if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory, and on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. And if you want to learn how to become a blockchain master step by step from start to finish, then head on over to dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamps today. And last but not least, I hate these disclaimers, but this is not financial advice. I'm not telling you to buy or sell any cryptocurrencies based on this information. And there's lots of scammers down in the comment section below impersonating me. So just don't even acknowledge them. I'll never give you my phone number or ask you to invest with me. So if you've been watching this YouTube channel for a while, or maybe you've just been hanging around the blockchain space in general, then you've seen decentralized finance or DeFi absolutely explode in the past year. This is basically taking existing financial products and moving them over to the blockchain. Things like savings, loans, trading, and also payments. Now over the past Last year, you know, we've had lots of questions like DeFi is awesome. You know, the innovation is happening largely on top of Ethereum. But at the end of the day, you know, a lot of that innovation can just be taken and move into other blockchains and make different trade-offs for scalability, et cetera, et cetera. So a lot of people are thinking, yes, DeFi is a thing. It's here to stay. But where will DeFi ultimately end up? Will it be on the most decentralized blockchain? Will it be on a less centralized, faster, cheaper blockchain? These are the kinds of questions that we're starting to answer. But today we see a massive vote of confidence by a major player like Visa using Ethereum to settle transactions. So let's dive into this and see what they're doing. So Visa now settles payments in USDC stablecoin on Ethereum blockchain. So Visa is initially working with Crypto.com for this service, and the company hopes to launch USD settlement capability for other partners as well in the year ahead. So let's break that down in case you're like brand new and trying to figure out what that is. So first of all, it's USDC coin, which is a stable coin. This is a cryptocurrency whose price doesn't change. It's pegged to the US dollar. You can always redeem one USDC for $1. This is a big deal to have a cryptocurrency that is not subject to this volatility. It's one of the reasons I don't think that Bitcoin is going to be a great payment solution anytime soon, but we'll likely see stable coins like this gain adoption for digital payments much faster. And I'm going to talk later in this video about why stable coins offer an advantage to regular dollars, but I'll give you a quick preview. Basically, it's faster settlement from the blockchain, transparency, et cetera, et cetera. Now, stable coins like USDC can easily be built with smart contracts by basically writing a code that powers USDC on top of a different blockchain like Ethereum. And that's exactly what USDC is. It's a stable coin powered by smart contracts running on top of Ethereum. And that's the exact version of USDC that this article is talking about. Now, how are they actually integrating these payments? Well, it's not like everyone overnight is going to just start having USDC under the hood inside their Visa payments, but they're working on an initial pilot program right now with Crypto.com and trying to launch settlement capacity for other partners in the year ahead. So Crypto.com is a really popular service. They offer a credit card where you can spend cryptocurrency. And what Visa is doing right here is actually offering a blockchain native way to do this. So instead of like buying cryptocurrency and then converting it into fiat currency whenever the payment takes place, it's actually settled on the blockchain. So here's what a use case like that would look like. So USDC Visa payments. So basically, the whole idea is that now you can spend cryptocurrency whenever you go make a payment, you know, at Starbucks, for example. Other crypto payment solutions work this way. Basically, you would hold USDC in your uh, wallet that's attached to your debit card. And when you would go pay the barista, right, it would basically just convert your cryptocurrency into dollars and then enter into the old payment network, right? There's a lot of bloat in there. What this does is it actually does the payment natively, okay? So if you hold USDC in your wallet that's attached to your Visa Crypto.com card, and, you know, the merchant also accepts Visa payments, then the entire Visa network will let you make this transaction under the hood on Ethereum and completely bypass the, you know, old financial rails. So now some people say like, why would you even want to use blockchain like this in the first place? Why would you use Ethereum? Well, we don't have total clarification on exactly why they've chosen to settle this on top of Ethereum. So I'm not speaking on behalf of them, but I'll draw some logical conclusions here. First of all, USDC is a widely used stablecoin and it's most widely used on top of Ethereum. 
So that's a really logical choice. Ethereum is very decentralized. A lot of the DeFi innovation and activities happening on top of Ethereum as where the users are, et cetera, et cetera. But there's a lot of doubts saying like, you know, the fees are too high. What value would there even be in making a transaction on a blockchain where the fees are as high as they are today on top of Ethereum? So it seems to me like all the benefits that you would get out of this essentially outweigh the cost or in this case, the fees. Okay, so number one is settlement time. So of course, time is money. So for a network like Visa to do this, I have a feeling that this is extremely valuable to them. A transaction on top of a blockchain like this gets completely settled finally as fast as the blockchain moves. So on Ethereum, this could be less than a minute compared to old legacy financial infrastructure, which could take a lot longer than that for finality, all right? So that's the whole important thing is that once the funds have been settled, there's no going back. So this also essentially eliminates the risk of chargeback or fraud, which I think a lot of people who have never had to accept um, you know, consumer-facing payments don't really grasp the major importance of this, okay? Because you can lose a lot of money if you run a business and people come in and make a credit card transaction that's fraudulent or maybe gets a charge back later and now you've delivered this good or service and you lose out. And maybe there was even a fee that the payment processor had to pay in order to settle that fraud case. So this will eliminate a lot of fat in that regard. It can add a lot of value here too. And so these are major improvements over the traditional payment structure that we have today. Okay, and it's really cool to see Visa jumping in on this because I say this is an experiment. Like we're making some assumptions that these things are true. I personally believe that they are, but it's really awesome to see a major payment network like Visa making bets on this and running this type of experiment to see if they can expand it uh, make this valuable in the marketplace with other partners. Because that seems to be the whole plan here. The company hopes to launch USDC settlement capability for other partners as well in the year ahead. So essentially, if people with from crypto.com can spend USDC and this proves to be a profitable experiment for everybody, then I expect this to be just the beginning of an explosion where this really could be a catalyst for mass adoption of blockchain technology. You know, I've always said that stable coins can be a killer app of blockchain technology. You know, they're kind of just an unsexy use case for a lot of people because it's just a cryptocurrency. You just send money around. It doesn't do anything that impressive beyond that. But there's a huge value add for the reasons I talked about a minute ago. But here's another one that I think a lot of people don't talk about. And this is the vision that I think we're headed towards, which is more and more people adopting these benefits. Fast, trustless, transparent transfers of stable cryptocurrency and how they are a big improvement on the current financial system that we have today. So ACH, SWIFT, all these legacy payment rails. And one big reason that I think we could see this moving forward is interbank transfers. So I've talked about this on my channel before, but I still think it's a big deal, which is if you've ever had to send a wire transfer before, it's absolutely crazy. You have to go into a physical bank, sign a bunch of paperwork, pay a pretty hefty fee, and then wait. You don't really know when those funds are actually going to move in between banks. The last time I did this, it took about two to three hours of my time total, and I had to keep calling and like checking to see if the recipient received the wire transfer. So I could see a future where you know settlement between banks can actually be improved with blockchain technology. Because you can use stable coins to do it, all right? You can use this public ledger to talk between each bank and transfer, you know, huge amounts of money for a much smaller fee than you would pay to send a wire transfer. Because don't forget with blockchain technology, the fees aren't based on the amount of cryptocurrency that you're sending. It's just based upon the demand for the network at that given time and also the cryptocurrency price of the underlying asset that you're using to pay the gas fees. So like Ether, for example. So this is one of the big reasons people complain about Ethereum right now not being able to use Uniswap because they're trading small amounts of money and the fees on Ethereum are relatively high compared to the amount of money they're trading. Let's say like $100, for example, and then you pay like a $50 fee, or maybe $1,000 and a $50 fee. That ratio is really bad. But if you want to do a really large wire transfer to, I don't know, buy a house or something, and you have to put down like 10, 20, 30, 50, $100,000 down, then, you know, paying that fee to send that kind of money around is pretty negligible. And you get all these extra benefits like really fast settlement, transparency, and trustlessness without the risk of reversal or anything like that. And so I've always thought this would be a huge benefit for large amounts of money between banks like this. Maybe banks could batch up transactions in order to do that for smaller payments, maybe aggregate it. But now we're actually seeing big bets on the value proposition for this on smaller consumer payments. And these benefits that I talked about actually outweighing the gas costs on top of Ethereum right now. Now, that being said, we also have layer two scaling solutions that are here now for Ethereum and much more that'll be more widely adopted later this year. I'm still standing by my prediction that I think we'll see wired layer two adoption in 2021. And people like Crypto.com and Visa who are working on a really advanced technical solution like this, also with USDC, they know that. And I have a feeling that they'll take advantage of some of these scaling solutions as they roll out and gain more popularity. So they could also be making a bet that the fees on ETH will decrease as these layer two scaling solutions come out and make this more profitable 
and just stack benefits on top of one another and make this a really killer solution overall. So that's what I see right now. Again, there could be some subsidies going on underneath to help you know with these fees. I don't know. But these are my thoughts. And the major takeaways are that this is massive validation for stable coins as a killer use case of blockchain technology. It's massive validation for Ethereum to be the blockchain of choice for a big payment network like Visa to roll out the solution on, test it out, and get it ready for other people to adopt the same. And it's also just massive validation for cryptocurrency and blockchain technology, the entire space in general. As we see this take off, you know, gain more mass adoption, and this could be a major catalyst for that. So that's all I've got for today. As always, you know, smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. That really helps these videos out so more people can learn about blockchain. If you like these videos and you want to get your hands dirty with this, you're as excited with this technology as I am, how can you do that? You can go to my YouTube homepage. You can find any of my free courses there, like Udemy courses, but they're totally free. If you like those, you want to take the next step, or hey, maybe you want to take a master shortcut entirely, I can show you to become a blockchain master step-by-step -step, start to finish over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp, okay? You don't have to be an expert to get started today. I've helped people with zero coding experience become real-world blockchain developers in a matter of months. So that's all I've got. Until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.